Okay, this video lecture is going to be about comparing and contrasting the processes of mitosis and meiosis, and you will be expected to do this for me as well, um, and kind of understand the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is the cellular process that the normal cells in your body go through to create extra cells, either for growth or healing injury or asexual reproduction. Meiosis is the process that occurs in order to create cells that can be used for sexual reproduction. And here we have generic diagrams of the processes of mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is here on the left. Meiosis is on the right. And I also have a more complete diagram. Mitosis again on the left, meiosis on the right, and I'll be using these to um, refer to as I discuss um, the comparisons. So we have eight characteristics that I'm going to ask you to be familiar with and be able to compare mitosis and meiosis. Now not only are you going to be asked to compare these characteristics, but you're going to ask to be able to explain them. Um, so in your notes, you should have a table that looks like this. There's an extra section um, called the explanation section. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncover the differences. And then I will go on and explain why those differences are important, why they're significant, why they occur. And I'm going to ask you to not only fill in the mitosis and meiosis column, but also, based what I, on what I'm saying, explain why that is true or why that is important. So let's begin. The first characteristic, the DNA replication has to occur first. In both processes, DNA replication occurs before the process occurs. These cells go through the normal cell cycle. Um, and during interphase, there's G1 growth S, which is the synthesis of DNA, and the G2 phase. So if we refer to our diagram here, and we look at these cells up at the top, these are what are known as our parent cells. So these would represent normal cells of the body. And if you'll notice, they have two types of chromosomes, long and short types. And there are two copies of each. So um, in these cells, which we're using as examples, there are eight total chromosomes. And before meiosis can or mitosis occurs, we have replication of the DNA. And we end up with eight chromosomes, four copies of the long, four copies of the short. The next topic, number of divisions. Well, mitosis goes through one division, and meiosis goes through two divisions. And that's important to understand because it explains how we get the correct number of chromosomes at the end of the process. If you recall in this diagram right here, after DNA replication, we have cells that have eight copies of the, of the two kinds of, of, the, of the chromosomes in this case, um, or four copies of each type. Um, to make cells which look identical to the original cell, where there's only two copies of each type, we need to divide the number of chromosomes here in half. So if we started with um, four chromosomes, after doubling we have eight. In order to get back to four chromosomes in each, we need to divide by two. Okay. Um, and that will give us four chromosomes here and four chromosomes here. Okay. In meiosis, the same thing occurred. So there were four chromosomes in the original cell, eight after DNA replication. The first cell division will divide it into two, so we will have four in this cell and four in this cell. That will be divided again in half to create sex cells, which have half the number of chromosomes that the parent did. Two chromosomes in each one instead of four. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of these numbers. 
OK, uh, number of cells produced. Mitosis creates two cells. Meiosis creates four. Uh, we can look at our more generic diagrams for this one. You'll notice here, after you take one cell, you divide it one time, you're going to make two cells. In meiosis, you take one cell, you divide it once, you get two, you divide those two cells again, you're going to end up with four cells. Okay. The processes they are associated with. Mitosis is associated with growth and asexual reproduction because it keeps the same number of chromosomes as the original cell. Um, so growth, because this can happen in um, the body of a, of a multicellular organism like yourself, um, your cells can replicate and still maintain their chromosome number. And it's critical that your cells keep the same number of DNA or same, same number of chromosomes, same amount of DNA in them. Same is true in asexual reproduction. The cells at the end of reproduction have to have the same number as the original parent, and mitosis makes that possible. Meiosis, on the other hand, is associated with sexual reproduction because it um, divides the total number of chromosomes from the parent cell in half. That way, uh, the, the sex cell that is created can combine with another sex cell later on to return the chromosome number to the original parent's total number. Okay. So in, in our bodies, we start off with uh, 46 total chromosomes, two copies of each type. Meiosis divides that so that each of our sex cells has 23 chromosomes. When you combine sperm and egg, 23 and 23, the resulting cell will have 46 chromosomes. That would be something you would want to have in your explanation section. Okay. Number of chromosomes in the daughter cell. Number of chromosomes is the same as the original in mitosis because we're making cells that are identical to the original. And in meiosis, it's half the number of the original cell. Again, this is important so that the chromosome number can be returned to the original number after sexual reproduction. Genetic diversity. Mitosis, the daughter cells are genetically identical to each other and to the parents. Let's go back here. Here are the parent cell, four chromosomes. The daughters, both of them have four chromosomes. They are identical to the parents. Um, in meiosis, the daughter cells are genetically different from each other and from the parents. If we go to our more complicated diagram of meiosis here, and if I get some of this out of the way, um, you will notice that the original parent cell has a long red, a long blue, a short red, a short blue, and the offspring, the, the, the daughter cells, there are four of them, are not the same as the parent. This one only has a long blue and a short blue. Um, and if you remember back to your lecture on mitosis and meiosis that we, or on the process of meiosis, excuse me, um, you may recall that um, these chromosomes can sort themselves differently, thereby creating unique combinations, right? Um, depending upon how they, the homologous pairs line up. And that can lead to even greater genetic diversity. So in this case, with only two kinds of chromosomes, these are the four possible offspring. Now, obviously, if this was the division, this long one should be blue, and over here this long one should be red. but. These are the possible kinds of chromosomes that can be created when you have two types of chromosomes. You can have a long red, short red, long blue, short red, long red, short blue, or long blue, short blue. Those are the possibilities. Increased genetic diversity right there. This is the only possibility after meiosis. Start with long blue, long red, short red, short blue. End with long blue, long red, short red, short blue. And then types of cells produced. We call the cells that are produced by mitosis somatic cells or cells of the body. And we call the cells that are produced meiosis by meiosis gametes or sex cells like sperm and egg. That concludes our comparison of the processes of mitosis and meiosis.
You will notice, um, as you've been writing your explanations, that most of the explanations do rely on understanding that idea of what the chromosome number starts at and what it ends at and why it needs to get reduced in meiosis and why it needs to stay the same in mitosis. That's going to be the critical piece that I will ask you to understand about the differences between these two processes.